Okay, so welcome on our session, uh, our last session, uh, last day. So uh, together with my colleague, we prepared presentation about hmm, uh, Kubernetes, SDN, performance and architecture. So uh, the goal of this presentation is to take through the, our findings and our ideas and experience uh, with around uh, almost one year experience of testing different cases of the uh, of the Kubernetes. So we, uh, we divided presentation into four parts. First, let's beginning like uh, comparing what's the plugins in the Kubernetes and how it works. Then uh, Marek will take uh, Calico in details, Open Contrail in details, and then we try to compare uh, those two solutions, uh, what's the differences, and uh, what is suitable for uh, which use case. Uh, something about us, uh, my name is Jakub Pavlík and uh, I am former CTO of TCP Cloud, now Director of Product Engineering at Mirantis. And uh, uh, Marek is a, a software engineer, also comes from TCP Cloud, and we work together for more than two years on different cases uh, and uh, different workloads. So networking in Kubernetes. Uh, first thing is like uh, when containers appeared, we successfully ignored them for a long time because it was like playing ground for the developers and we uh, didn't want to uh, take it serious. And the reason was the networking and the problems with like port mapping and how to, how to build a production because build a container, run the container on the laptop is easy. Uh, you can launch it, you can launch multiple containers, but how do you want to orchestrate them run some production, uh, HA, high availability, disaster recovery, and of course the networking. And we started to uh, take containers serious when we discovered the Kubernetes as an approach which finally take the containers and uh, replace the way where you have to map each port for the application and remember how you are exposing ports because you are launching ports you don't care what's the IP, and uh, each pod has an IP, and you are just exposing your service endpoint. So you don't care anymore what's the network there, how it's connected, create a network. You just launch the pod and expose the pod as a service endpoint, and you have balancing. So it's really cool solution what we took a look and we started working on it. And uh, there are different approaches for different use cases, like overlay versus non-overlay discussion, multi-tenancy security, uh, performance uh, scaling. We will take you through this, how we see it. And it's also like there is multiple plugins, similar like uh, I see like analogy in uh, OpenStack Neutron at the beginning when there was, and still there are a uh, couple of plugins and uh, it's difficult for people to, uh, who are new to understand which plugin works and usually you have to test that because every vendor tell you this plugin is the best. Uh, so there are a couple of uh, SDNs, uh, Calico, Open Contrail, Romana, Weave, Contev, Open vSwitch. We uh, look at it and because we come from the OpenStack and this is OpenStack Summit and one of the most uh, usable solution for Neutron is uh, Open Contrail. We decided that we will pick the Open Contrail as an example and Calico as a most common uh, and let's say from our point uh, production ready network plugin for the Kubernetes and we wanted to compare those two solutions not just uh, uh, not just as a uh, performance, but also functional features and, and the use cases. So overlay versus non-overlay. So if you look at uh, common overlay concerns, like this is now very popular for the people. So they're saying like you lose the benefit of the simplicity, 
uh, you lose the performance because you have overlay which is not needed. It's uh, difficult to maintain. It's difficult to troubleshoot. So these are the uh, statements of the people who prefer uh, non-overlay. And if you look at the overlay, uh, you have benefits like native multi-tenancy, uh, security, and with the open control you can get features like EVPN, L3 VPN, you have analytics. So this is like two worlds where the new world is non-overlay and the second world is uh, 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 is a legacy enterprise which need to cover uh, several features which must be there. Uh, some of the time usually people try to simplify that just it's just a performance issue. But uh, from the persp uh, performance perspective, uh, not using overlay, you still necessarily use the internal bridges, the MOOCs for the container. And the performance difference in the end, and you will see it on, uh, on our slide, is like 3 or 4% of the payload what differs. And maybe what's, uh, what's the difference, uh, which is the packet per second, which the question is if this parameter is really valuable in the containers. It makes sense for NFV clouds where you are launching the firewalls and, and routers, but the question is if containers also need this. So I uh, borrowed the statement from my, of my favorite uh, guys. Uh, so the key aspect is to consider is the operation complexity. And it's really, it really depends on the use case where what you are running. If you are running application, just one application stack, and you, you don't need to solve the security, uh, the, the balancing, and separation of these services, and physical infrastructure separation from the architecture, uh, from, the, from the application itself, then, uh, then uh, non-overlay is fine. Yeah? If you need to separate it, and you need to put your endpoint for uh, for the Oracle database cluster or uh, go on some legacy world, then you will probably need the overlay. Yeah? And we are not saying what is right. So we uh, run the test environment when we run several functional and performance tests. These are the use cases what we tried with my team for well, almost one year. So we ran the Calico on bare metal cluster with 100 nodes. We run Kubernetes with OpenContrail on the nodes with OpenContrail 2.x, with OpenContrail 3.x. We run uh, OpenContrail inside of Kubernetes with the Calico. We run OpenContrail and Kubernetes next together. We run Calico in OpenStack with OpenContrail through the BGP as a service feature. Uh, we posted also the blog about, and we are running uh, also, open control Kubernetes in OpenStack with Kubernetes when you are using single control as a data plane and you can map through the V router. So we tried multiple scenarios and uh, we tested in scale of up to 100 nodes, uh, not more, and we will share the story uh, today. So my colleague will take you through the each uh, components. Oh, thank you, Jacob. A nice quote by Pedro. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would like to start to explain you the basic components of the Calico architecture, but first let me tell you the, uh, our evaluation of the Calico. We have been using and evaluating Calico since the Kubernetes version 1.1, and we are now uh, presenting Calico as the default networking solution for the Kubernetes for the uh, new version of Mirantis Cloud Platform. Uh, so let me get back to the uh, to the architecture point of view. Uh, Calico is using CNI, which stands for the Container Network Interface, which is abstraction layer for uh, connecting the third party uh, uh, SDN solution to the containers. It's using the traditional bird routing daemon for all the BGP stuff. It's using etcd as, uh, as a key value store for the Calico configuration. It's using the confd for the generating the bird configuration file and Felix uh, as a daemon which is on each uh, Calico node. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that the Calico as we use it is a pure layer free, uh, so there is uh, only routing and I will hop into the next slide and what it actually does, uh, uh, it takes a node, it 
take the slash whatever network, uh, it uh, gives it to the node, and when you spin up the container, uh, it will provide the slash 32, so host network, uh, to the container. And then the routing information is distributed via BGP. So by default in Calico, uh, there is the full mesh BGP uh, network, which is not like uh, really good for production and it's not really good for scale because when you will end up like having 100 servers, you will end up having 100 BGP sessions per server. When you have 1,000 servers, you will end up having 1,000 of BGP sessions per server. So that's why we are using the, the routers as a route reflectors, which stands like for uh, the propagation, centralized propagation of the routes. So, I mean, by default, IBGP is not distributed to the IBGP peers, but with route reflectors, you only peer the nodes with these route reflectors, and they are responsible for distributing the routes to the other nodes. So, uh, you will end up having, uh, for each uh, Calico node, having the uh, two BGP sessions uh, with the route reflectors. There are two for, like, active backup scenario. Um, this is not only the only concern. The, the other concern is that uh, you are trying to be uh, like not dependent on the underlay at all because uh, when you are using pure layer free, you need to redistribute the routes all over your network so uh, the nodes can communicate to each other. So you actually need to propagate these slash networks from the Calico to the, uh, to the networking infrastructure and you need to uh, use, for example, BGP to do that. But you don't want to, like, add in another hypervisor, you don't want to create the uh, BGP sessions with all of the networking devices that are uh, in your infrastructure. So you are just peering it with, uh, with the route reflectors. Uh, okay, so some pros and cons of using Calico. Uh, one of the pros is that there is no overhead. When, uh, since you are using only pure layer free, there is no like inner header, outer header, no like encapsulation at all. It's all transparent routing. Uh, and the other thing is that it reduces the complexity. For example, in this world, uh, for like traditional networking guys, it's really hard to uh, go uh, along with the SDNs and stuff, but since this is using the normal routing daemon, the BERT, uh, it's uh, possible for like traditional networking engineers to, uh, to troubleshoot and operate this stuff. Uh, yeah, on the other hand, it is uh, highly underlay dependent since you need to uh, connect the Calico nodes with the BGP protocols and you need to redistribute the routes all over the environment. So it kind of take you away uh, the benefit why you even use the overlay so that you don't want to be dependent on your, uh, that you don't want to be dependent on your uh, networking team. And uh, of course there is also no layer two since there is by default uh, only routing. Uh, some, some facts about the uh, Calico using the Kubernetes. As I already mentioned, it is using the CNI plugin. Uh, we are uh, right now evaluating Calico 0.22.0 with the Kubernetes uh, 1.4. Uh, and uh, one of the features that it provides is the Kubernetes policy for the security. Uh, then we have also some production consideration, what we have found out during our testing and evaluation. And one of these uh, things are to always separate the ETCD cluster for the Calico. I mean, separate it from the Kubernetes ETCD, don't use the same key value store. Uh, the other thing is use at least version free ETCD, which brings a huge improvement of like performance. Uh, the other thing that I already mentioned is to disable BGP full mesh peering. And uh, then we have a thing that uh, it's like, from our point of view right now, don't run it as a Kubernetes manifest. This is like our evaluation right now also for the Kubernetes. We prefer to run it as a systemd services run it, uh, rather than run it in a Kubernetes manifest. Uh, okay, uh, let's jump uh, on the open control. Uh, I will also start like 
uh, with some brief uh, architecture overview. But first, let me uh, tell you the experience that our company has with this SDN. Uh, we have been using the Open Contrail for more than like two and a half years, but uh, we started to using it with OpenStack because at the time the Kubernetes wasn't even existing. So uh, our main experience with, is with OpenStack and the virtual machines. Uh, and we are using the uh, Kubernetes uh, or uh, Open Control plugin for Kubernetes uh, since day one. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so Open Control is an overlay solution, and it has like parts like control, config, analytics, database, agent. I mean, there are a lot of services, and let me just briefly tell you that uh, control is responsible for like control plane, the connection between the agents. Uh, exchange routing information between agents and between the uh, physical gateways. Uh, config is using to translate the API calls, uh, UI calls, uh, or whatever calls to actually to make the uh, configuration change. Analytics collects the huge amount of data about all the flows, uh, about the performance uh, usage of all your nodes, etc. The database is then uh, for the persistent storage uh, of your configuration as well as the analytics data. Uh, and the agent, together with the uh, kernel module, then is responsible for all the rounding and stuff. Um, Open Control uh, gives you opportunity to use multiple encapsulations, like MPLS over GRE, MPLS over UDP, as well as the VXLAN. Uh, it uh, usually uses the physical gateways, and it's also our recommendation to use them. Uh, these gateways are used for north-south traffic. Uh, from the uh, OpenStack point of view, as well as from the Kubernetes point of view, if your containers want to go out, they go through, uh, through the gateways. Um, this is like example topology of the control plane of the open control with Kubernetes. Uh, as you can see on the right side, there are two control controllers, which uh, has the XMPP sessions uh, with the vRouter agent. Uh, the concept is here the similar as way as the Calico works uh, with the route reflectors. When there is a change on the vRouter agent, the change is propagated to the control nodes via XMPP, and then the trail controllers are responsible for uh, distributing all the, uh, all the networking changes to all other agents. And as well as there is the BGP peering to, get, uh, uh, to the cloud gateways. Yeah, uh, I don't want to like make a confusion. This is only like for control plane. The data plane tunnels are like created directly from the containers to the gateways, as well as between the containers. So this stands only for a control plane. Yeah, uh, also the pros and cons of uh, using Open Control. Uh, it is underlay agnostic. Uh, you are not dependent on the top of the rack switches, aggregation switches. Uh, or whatever switches. Um, maybe someone can say that the, the routers are like the legacy world as well, but uh, we see the cloud gateways, the physical routers for termination, the tunnels as a solution of the cloud. So they are part of the SDN from our point of view. It's not uh, the part of the legacy world. Uh, the other benefit is uh, the, there are capabilities of advanced networking features including like load balancers as a service, using the layer two, layer three VPNs, uh, also extension to the bare metal world, like uh, orchestrating the top of the rack switches via OVSDB, uh, configuring the routers via netconf, and other, and other stuff. Uh, I put the using physical gateways to the pros because uh, we see it as uh, more stable, and it also provides uh, you the possibility to connect almost every encapsulation from the world to your cloud. So you have no limitation considering what can go to the cloud, what can go to cloud. It provides the full separation on layer three or layer two, and so that's why it's under the pros. Uh, under the cons, there's, uh, of course, overhead. Uh, it's mentioned that there is adding the payload to the each packet that is processed. Uh, you have inner outer header and also the complexity. I mean, 
advanced networking features goes end to hand together with the complexity and so it can gives you like a lot of trouble uh, uh, let me tell you how the open contrail works with the oh there is a mistake with the kubernetes uh, there is a, a kubernetes network manager which provides like the bridge the connection between the uh, Kubernetes API server and uh, uh, Contrail config API. Uh, there is the huge difference in the balancing uh, between the containers and uh, from the accessing to the cluster. It's uh, uh, in the Contrail, it is using ECMP from uh, the gateway up to the containers or between containers itself. So there is no uh, cube proxy or IP tables balancing like with other SDNs like uh, Calico. Uh, uh, there is also a, a bigger separation on the networking level. Uh, I mean, uh, the networks are created and uh, containers are associated to the networks based on the labels uh, in the manifests. So by design uh, in overlay, the networks are completely separated but the Contrail is using the next level of separation uh, on a namespace level, and uh, it uh, takes like the concept that the namespace in Kubernetes, which normally is more or less like logical separation rather than physical separation, it can be comparable in OpenStack tenants. So the, it's like an open Contrail point of view, the namespaces uh, in Kubernetes are tenants in OpenStack. Uh, so, and the security is done by Contrail policies. Um, we are currently evaluating the Contrail, the latest stable release, 3.0.3, uh, which supports Kubernetes 1.4. Uh, then we have some uh, production consideration for using Open Contrail. Uh, this is not like a consideration using Open Contrail with Kubernetes, but using uh, uh, Open Contrail at all. Always separate the Cassandra cluster, the database cluster for the config and for the analytics because analytics can generate uh, loads of data which can like uh, overload your Cassandra or your disk, or your disk space. Uh, as I already mentioned, use physical routers as the gateways. Uh, all right, and I will uh, give the word back to Jacob. Okay, okay, so <clears throat> a small comparison. So regarding paint performance, as I said, like it really depends on the encapsulation we uh, in the contrail uh, we get the best uh, uh, best performance with MPLS uh, over UDP uh, between uh, containers and MPLS over GRE towards to uh, to gateways. Uh, the performance here really depends on the NIC offloading. So. It's really difficult to uh, to say how, how what will be the performance because it depends on the drivers on the kernel. So we did the test with on kernel 4.4 on Ubuntu Xenile. Uh, the payload overhead is around 4%. Uh, in this particular case, how we measure that by IPERF, it's like uh, 1%. But we had to. Um, uh, so, so, so it's like it's very difficult. It's it's around the percentage, and it's not really about bandf bandwidth, as you know probably. But in overlay world, it's more about packet per second, uh, as I already said. And packet per seconds in containers, I don't think that it's a, it's a real issue because what you usually running in the containers are nginx and Apache and this proxy. So if I need more. Uh, performance, more packets, I will scale my container uh, rather than uh, uh, increase the container. So that's the biggest difference between virtual machines and, and the containers and still like NFV features where these functional signs are needed for the performance are not uh, not uh, useful for, for, for the Kubernetes and containers. On the Calico side, it's no encapsulation, uh, no overhead. And bandwidth is almost similar. Uh, 
it doesn't make sense to really show how, how CPU utilization is measured and how, it, how it's generated because it's not exact measurable and exact comparable. The important thing is that the bandwidth is almost same and it's really about the, the it's not really about performance but about the use case what you are trying to get. So why not both? Uh, uh, in this uh, example, we uh, are showing that uh, we are able to uh, run the uh, physical servers uh, with Kubernetes on the hardware with uh, Contrail, as well as OpenStack with the Contrail, and we can provision for the for the users, for the developers, through the heat or through the uh, Murano or whatever uh, application workloads with Kubernetes with Calico for the testing. Yeah, so if developers need to quickly test something or developer playing around with Kubernetes, you can easily do, uh, do it. We also set up the case where we enabled BGP as a service in the uh, open contrail and we put the BGP peering from the virtual machines into the uh, vRouter on the node, which is the latest feature of, of the open contrail. And uh, uh, we run it. Uh, what, we, what we see in this multi-example uh, approach, uh, especially here, it's like uh, uh, for whatever reason, you cannot put everything into the container. And it's not sometimes technical, but it's uh, license sometimes also. So, uh, so whatever, for, for some reasons you cannot uh, take some vendor databases and put them into virtual machines or put them in the container, it doesn't make sense. So with the overlay, you can very easily connect your physical uh, application, con uh, your physical nodes with Kubernetes with application controllers with your database nodes which are running on the OpenStack VMs or which are running on the completely separated uh, bare metal server or, or uh, whatever is needed. So this is also one of the use cases uh, which we tested and which works uh, very well. Uh, so another thing what was presented yesterday, I think, by Rudra from the Contrail team is like running uh, Kubernetes with Contrail on top of OpenStack with Contrail and use the same Contrail because there is starting uh, to be issue like duplication of the overlay, overlay in overlay, vRouter in vRouter. So they solve this issue very easily that uh, Cube uh, Network Manager which manages the uh, Kubernetes is able to call uh, Contrail controllers of OpenStack and he is able to add sub interface for your container directly into the virtual machine. So then you can use same approach, same networking, and you can again on the cloud mix your containers and VMs uh, into OpenStack, which is another very good uh, use case. Uh, what we found for the Kubernetes itself, it's like that we are building our own binaries. Uh, Mirantis supports the uh, Kubernetes clusters. So we have a uh, downstream team which works with the upstream and provide a patched and fixed stable production Kubernetes. So we are taking these binaries and uh, instead of taking Docker containers with unknown origin or building them itself, we have team for this and we offer this service to our customers. And we are running these services right now in the uh, as well as ETCD in uh, system D, not in the manifest with the Docker. Because uh, from the operation perspective, we figure out that uh, doesn't make sense for us really to uh, uh, launch Kubernetes itself in the Kubernetes or in the containers because it adds extra complexity. ETCD is one binary. Kubernetes, Hypercube, now it's also one binary. So why we cannot take these two files and put them into systemd and not be dependent on everything on the Docker and everything uh, running in the container. So we are separating this. Uh, we also have a provisioning tool, what we, what we offer. 
and what we are using, which is not like upstream, uh, upstream default salt in, uh, installation because it's a lot of mess and a lot of stuff and it's suitable mostly for developers, not for the production. So we are building the Kubernetes, putting stuff together and make it real as operation ready for our customers instead of playing ground for, for the developers. And we also pull the uh, images from the uh, private Docker registry uh, with the authentication. So this is how it looks our, our production uh, Kubernetes uh, deployments. So small comparison in the end. So open contrail, Calico, encapsulation. In contrail, you can choose. Uh, as I said, MPLS over UDP was, had the best performance between containers. Uh, bandwidth, it's like difference of 5%, let's say, in general. Uh, security multitenancy. In Calico, you have new policy, which you need to specif specify, which is like extra, extra work, or it creates IP tables, so it works. But in, on the other hand, in Contrail, it's natively. So everything what you provision, based on your label, it creates virtual network, which is completely separated and based on just labels you automatically creating the policies. So that's the, that's the differences. But again, if you are launching Kubernetes for single purpose, you don't need to really solve the policies. Um, uh, Multi-cloud, uh, open contrail, enable you to c cover VM, bare metal containers, whatever, Calico, uh, in the Calico you cannot cover, but you can run uh, internal Mirantis team uh, created solution where you can run single Calico uh, for Kubernetes as well as for the OpenStack. So you can reuse single Calico. It's especially for use cases when you want to run containerized OpenStack on top of Kubernetes. And OpenStack should use Neutron plugin Calico. So then it makes sense to use single Calico for, for both and don't have to. Uh, complexity, uh, Calico is just BERT, and BERT is here for several years, so it's stable, and it's using uh, ETCD as just storing the objects, so it's pretty easy. It's, uh, we didn't find any issues what, what's how to, where we spend some time on huge debugging. In open contrail, it's like set of many tools Cassandra, Zookeeper, Redis, Kafka, <laughs> lot of lot of stuff, and for new people, it's really difficult to understand. But that's the reason why we are here to help you to set up your open container environments. And uh, extra features, uh, uh, as Marek said, you can get almost everything into your container, which is awesome, on the other hand, if it's really needed, because containers was created for the simplifying. Uh, this is just the question, uh, question, sorry, um, this is just the picture from um, Mirantis Cloud Platform Design, how it's, uh, how it's done now. So, uh, what we are testing when we, when we launching Mirantis Cloud Platform with Open Contrail is like we, taking the small deployments, free servers, where we putting HA proxy with KPLIFD for, especially for Kubernetes HA, because again, with Kubernetes, you need to solve high availability, and how you will solve it, you need to have two or three, uh, better is three nodes, and you need to have single endpoint. So again, you will end up with virtual IP or external physical balancer base, what you can afford. And we are launching on top of that the contrail controllers as the containers, as well as OpenStack, and we also provisioning Galera and RabbitMQ into the container. So this is just another uh, use case uh, what we what we did. So that's uh, everything what we want to share. So if there are any questions, we can answer them. I'm curious what will be this question. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it will be difficult to answer. No, it will be easy one. Yeah. So I have the question on the architecture. You shown them um, mix architecture, right? So the question from the service providers is like, uh, if you want to use open contrail and you also want to use open stack, the front end is open stack and there is so much challenge. Like if you want to make some change, then it, you can't upstream it. So what do you suggest in that case? Like you mean, uh, you mean when you want to launch Kubernetes inside of OpenStack for for the for the services? Or? No, uh, just uh, leave the containers aside. Just using OpenStack and Open Contrail. Mm -hmm. So if if we want to uh, change some port definition, bring in enhancement to OpenStack. Uh, there's no way to upstream because the back end is contrail, right? Mm -hmm. So what should the service providers do in that case? Uh, I'm not sure if I get the right. So you, you mean like changes in the open stack, what you did, and yeah. how to get it into open contrail? Yeah, well, you have to upstream into open stack, right? The community is working on a different direction, but open contrail is working in a different. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the that's a good question. Um, that's difficult. Yeah, it uh, it must be discussed with the <laughs> with the probably contrail development team how how to how to do it. Uh, yesterday I heard that you have to submit a blueprint, and they will figure out. So, uh, but uh, basically, uh, I think that I know that Neutron support a couple of features, or Neutron team trying to support a couple of features which are not in the open contrail. So that's the like really difficult decision, and it's it depends on the use case. Yeah, what what exactly you need. Yeah, it's difficult to answer. It's more about to bring the people from Contrail and ask them how they follow the Neutron, uh, neutron vision. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, as the title of the talk is uh, performance, I had a few questions regarding the performance. Mm -hmm. Could you go to the slide that you had on performance? Uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, so over here, could you elaborate a little more on like what tool was used, what packet sizes were, and uh, when you mentioned you had 100 nodes, how exactly does that fit in with Can the performance? Can you take machines? it? Uh, yeah, well, uh, with the containers, uh, we didn't actually like increase the MTU sizes, and we were only using the standard uh, byte size that is used by iperf, so uh, we actually didn't like Create, didn't try to create any uh, a scenario that we even won't like see in uh, our environments at all. Yeah, so basically, we we run the we we scale 200 nodes and we then we provisioned uh, ports, see how it behaves, and then we did the measuring between mm -hmm. the nodes, like like what performance we we can get between the containers between east and west, and what performance we can get from the uh, from the north and south and we didn't want to like replicate what uh, all everything what was done because, for example by calico team where they measured the containers bare metal and they measured the cpu and all this stuff yeah, we we like get the point where the bandwidth is near line speed and uh, we try to focus more on uh, as I said, like performance is not only one uh, criterion. What, what, uh, what? Why we are choosing the, or picking the the solution? Because you can easily scale. We tested like how many objects we can also create in etcd, like uh, because uh, when you are growing your your etcd objects growing as well. So we started with etcd version two, then we moved to etcd version three. Yeah, so that's like for the for the routing of the calico, especially it's like it's built and it's it's a it's a native uh, native routing. 
Okay, so, uh, but just to go back, so uh, you mentioned that you had pods which are running iPerf, so mm -hmm. uh, one pod is talking to another pod, one is a client, one is a server, uh -huh. is that right? Yes. So in that case, when you had the NIC offloads, uh, does Mirantis support enabling the NIC offloads when you deploy the cluster, or you had to go to each node to specifically tune, I'm pretty sure you used RSS, DSO, GSO. Yeah, that's, Just to get the performance yeah, that's, the that's, that's some tuning what you need to set on the NICs and it, I said it depends on what NIC, what NIC you are using but on most of the oh. cases we didn't do any, uh, we didn't do any, any special parameters for, for the NICs yeah. because in Contrail when you increase the, the MTU then you get this performance and uh, uh, in Calico you get it without any tuning. This, these parameters. Okay, thanks. And I would like to maybe add that uh, we are uh, using Calico, but there is not like the a lot of uh, Calico uh, containers which will be increased by uh, increasing the cluster size because on a compute nodes there is running Calico, so the server is aware of the Calico routes as well as uh, the Kubernetes is able to uh, to make the balancing between the service endpoints, but the uh, things that run on the hypervisors and containers uh, are libvirt and Nova Compute, which uh, uses the host networking. Yes, okay, so if there are not any more questions, thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you.